Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, this past Wednesday night, my wife and I attended the open house for the 10th anniversary of the Vineland Research and Innovation Center in Vineland. And let's be honest, I've been there and I've gone through the different tours over the years. And it's nice to see the progress on a lot of the different research that is going on there. The first one that I really enjoyed on Wednesday night was about the cold snap pear. Now, we know that Pears are just absolutely wonderful. But what was happening was the whole market for pears in Canada collapsed. It collapsed because of uh, labor costs and also because of disease and being able to compete against the cheaper imports from the United States. We were importing 54% or over 78,000 metric tons of pears into Canada. Now, we need to say, okay, wait a minute, pears? We can grow pears here, but we need one that makes it far more economical for the farmer. But also, it has to be a good pear for the consumer. And that's exactly what cold snap pear is. It was developed by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada over the last couple of decades. It's taken that long to do the proper breeding and selection. And in 2009, the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada licensed cold snap pear to Vineland for global commercialization. That means control of it for all of this planet. So, it means money coming in. It means that it's a new variety, and we want to know that this new variety is actually going to benefit. It has certain features that we, as consumers, like, but also that farmers like. First of all, a cold snap pear is a very attractive pear. It's got a little bit of a blush on it, It's going to be juicy enough and have a nice enough, sweet enough flavor. But it also has the winter hardiness. And at the same time, it's going to store well. So after harvest, it's going to be able to be stored for longer periods of time. One of the greatest assets of this pear is actually disease resistance to fire blight because fire blight is what really gets all of the rosaceae family. So it's not just pears. How about mountain ash, the tony aster? Many of the other plants that are in the rosaceae family will be adversely affected and spread the disease. So... Here we have a pear that is now more resistant. That means that the farmer can now put in pears on closer spacings. They can grow them on wires. It means that they're lower down. They're easier to pick. It means people aren't up and down ladders. This means costs of harvesting, growing, and spraying are all much, much lower. As a result, you're going to see a resurgence of pears, Canadian-grown pears, which is always a good thing, and not uh, pears from overseas and from the United States. We have to understand that we are planting these and they are growing them. Not only that, but they're also being grown here in Niagara. So that means that they are going to be available locally, and that's really good. So it is the farmers in this area who are going to benefit, and so are we with a pear that we can actually eat and store and enjoy much longer into the season. It also has 
less of that grainy texture. It's juicier than other pears. It's got the sweet and it's got all the flavorful pear taste. And all of that with a long-lasting pear, even when it's fully ripe. So when it's fully ripe, it still lasts even longer. So that is really why we need to continue to breed, process, and make available for us in this market and Canada food that we can actually grow here and enjoy, and the rest of the world will also enjoy. So it's a great pear, and it's going to be fairly easy to harvest because the fruit does hang well. Now that sounds strange, but when it hangs well, it's easier to grab, pick, etc. And that means that the fruit will be easier to pick. It's harvested late in the season, which helps with the farm labor situation. Okay. And, uh, it, of course, one of the great things is it's a decent-sized pear. I think you're going to see this in more and more stores. You're going to start and probably have actually seen the cold snap pear in limited quantities in grocery stores. It usually comes in those cello clear bags with the blue. It's almost a robin's egg blue. You'll see that. And it'll say cold snap pear. And that is a good thing. In other words, good marketing. Nice Canadian flag or maple leaf on the packaging as well. So that was one of the ones from this past Wednesday night. But also... There is another one, and it was it's called Smitten. Now, the Canadian apple industry has suffered a little bit, and so we have gone scouting, as Canadians, around the world for apples that we can grow here that suit our needs. And the... One of the best countries for growing apples has always been New Zealand. And New Zealand has produced an apple that is called Smitten. It is already being planted in and across Canada. And this means that this apple is being more or less tested. It generates higher returns than the standard apple such as Royal Gala, which one of my favorites, because it is so sweet, that you're going to see a lot more of this apple. There's about 200,000 trees planted, and I think you'll see over the years even more. You're going to see a decent price and return for the farmer, you're going to get a good apple that's tasty, that's easier to grow, and it measures up to our needs here in Canada. So, it's going to be an apple that you're going to want to try and taste, and you're going to find that it is actually excellent. So, if you can compare an apple to a Royal Gala, then there's not much wrong with that apple. Now, of course, we've got also one of the ones I always was disappointed when I heard this was that the Vineland Research Sweet Potato people say it's now going to be 2019 before their sweet potato variety is going to be available across Canada. We're working with McCain's for the growing and, of course, distribution of sweet potato fries. But also what you'll find is that this one tastes better. Now, I can say that because I've eaten it. I was at the Fruit and Vegetable Convention two years ago. And they had some samples there cooked hot, okay? 
and you could just go and try them. Trust me. I like sweet potato fries, but this sweet potato grown in Canada is going to be so much better than what you've got now. Okay, trust me. It tastes better. It's got a better texture, and um, it's to die for. And we were so disappointed that it's going to be not till 2019 because at that time it was planned for 2018 and we were saying, oh, it's getting closer and closer to the time that the sweet potato would be available. So we have to wait a little longer, people, but it's still not named either. They're working on that. It still has a V number, okay? In other words, because it's Vineland, it's got a V at the front and then a number. And eventually it will have a name. The other thing that we need to look at was okra. And I, we looked initially at okra. And we were looking at fields of okra. All different kinds were being tested when we first saw this. And the okra was just absolutely spectacular. It was four or five feet tall, but that's not really what we needed. So we were going through, and they did the selections, and they now have a variety of okra that they can grow here that will give you the volume that you need to make it economical to grow here in Canada. So let's be honest. I like okra, but I like it in soups stews it's a natural thickener and um and of course it's a vegetable and it's good for you you slip it in there and the kids will never know it's even in the soup so it's a good thing and we saw that one but they also have and have selected eggplants over the years to what is going to be very popular and they've got it down to two or three different varieties and we have tasted them in the past. But let's be honest, there's going to be some that are going to be more popular. If you don't produce enough eggplant, then you're not really going to be viable. And they've got it down to three. And trust me, one of them is the most beautiful violet they're all long and thin, and the other is a very dark black. And the other one is, of course, the dark purple egg. So you're going to see the winner of those three out in the market in the next few years. And the nice thing about it is that you go and actually cut them up and take a look at them. One of the things that you want to do is... Make sure that when you cut open your eggplant that the seeds are not colored. They can be there, but they should be the same color as the flesh. That means it's ripe and it's time to eat. When they start to color up, that's when they get a little more bitter, a little stronger flavor, and that's when you've let them go too far. So we learned all of this as well, and I think that was fantastic okay to be able to see that they're also working on a program for tender fruit they are working with peaches and they are working with apricots the apricots that they were working they gave us samples to try and trust me my wife is an apricot person and she loved the apricots at the end when on the last tour they offered her some of the ones that were left okay now these are the ones that other people hadn't eaten they'd left them there she just went wild she had at least a pocket full of apricots and uh, let's be honest I'm not an apricot fan but I liked the apricots that I had they had a little pink or red blush on them they were ripe they weren't too fuzzy. I hate fuzzy fruit. That's why I have to peel my peaches before I can eat it, okay? That's why I like nectarines. But the 
apricots don't have that. And they are flavorful. They are solid. They're meaty. They're freestone. And they have all that color and look to them as well. It was really, really enjoyable. And even I liked the apricots. Peaches I left alone because I didn't have a knife to peel off every little scrap of skin. Can't handle it. So they are looking at that. They are trying to move the peach crop earlier. Now, the earliest they can get them is into mid to late July, depending on the season. And what they want to do is move it a little farther forward because that's when there is less competition from the massive imports from the United States and overseas. And as a result, that's what they're working towards. So they want a good freestone peach that's earlier size, color, and of course, flavor. So it's we're working on that as well. And let's be honest, they had a few there. They looked right, but I didn't get to taste them because of the skin. Okay, so I can't say that they were how far along they are in picking one, but I can tell you this, they look good. <laughs> so all of this was going on. They also gave away some of the roses for the Canadian Shield Rose, which is, of course, the rose for the 150th anniversary of Canada. And I didn't win one. So, but I think what you're going to see and everything I've seen of the ones that I've seen that are being sold, etc. They're more of a shrubby red flowered rose that's very disease resistant. But it looks a little more ground covery, if there is such a word, than it is more upright. So I think think what we're going to see is we're going to get this hummock or mound of rose out of the Canadian Shield. And of course, it's hardy all the way across Canada. And that really is what we're looking for. There's a new one coming. Uh, it probably won't be here for another couple years, but I'm waiting for it. I think I may skip the Canadian Shield and wait for the other one coming, which, from what I remember, had something to do with the Northern Lights. So we'll just take a look at that one. And the few pictures that I saw was great. I'm Bruce Zimmerman. This is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.